Uh, I'm going to be reading 1 John 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sage, and uh, happy Christmas, everyone. Lovely to see you on this Christmas morning, and uh, to you too who are joining us from wherever you are online. Uh, it's lovely to have you with us. Ben Gray is my name. I'm the minister of the church here at All Saints. Uh, it's a great privilege, a pleasure to, to be with you on this Christmas morning. Uh, if kids need or would like something to, to keep them occupied, some activities to help them focus for the next um, few minutes, they can head up the back and Joss will give them some stuff. Uh, if not, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a good job. Um, as that happens, let me tell you some uh, things that you can be aware of this Christmas morning. Uh, the first one is that we're back here tomorrow morning. I'm really worried I'm going to forget. Uh, so if I'm not here, apologies for that. No, we'll be, we'll be here tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We'll be here uh, on Boxing Day to think about uh, uh, why Christmas is essential. Uh, the next thing on our list is that up the back, there's a whole bunch of resources available for you to take. Uh, things especially up the back uh, exist for you to get clear and to get sure about who Jesus is and what it looks like to trust and follow Him. One of the resources up there to help you get clear and to get sure is Two Ways to Live. It's a summary booklet to help you think about uh, the whole Bible in six uh, easy steps to summarise what Christians believe. It's a great thing to help you get clear and to get sure and to help you give clarity and assurance to someone else when it comes to understanding Jesus. Uh, what goes with this little booklet is a wonderful new website that's so easy to use, it's so clear and helpful, twowaystolive.com. It's a great one to keep close by, it's a great one to share with other people that they can navigate it on their own or with you as you explain Jesus to them. Uh, the other thing up the back uh, this Christmas morning is, is this, you'll see a, a picture, oh sorry, Hope Explored, on the back of your handout, again to help you get clear and to get sure, uh, is a little explanation of Hope Explored. Uh, if you want to think about what Christian hope really is in three short sessions, I'd love to do that with you after the summer break as we head into February. Uh, there's a QR code on the back of your handout that you can scan and let me know that you'd like to come along to, to Hope Explored, three sessions with me, thinking about what Christian hope uh, is all about. The final thing is up the back uh, is our Christmas kind of installation up the back there. Those boxes are not decorative. Uh, those boxes are Christmas care packages. They're hampers with Christmas food, with some pantry essentials and some toiletry essentials for Christmas. If you're in a bit of need and you'd like to grab one on the way out, please take one. If you've got a friend or a neighbour who's maybe isolating or in need that you know of and you'd like to drop one off to them, please take them. It would be, it would be wonderful if this morning uh, all those boxes were taken and given to someone in need or put to use by you uh, at this Christmas day. All right, 1 John chapter 1, we're thinking about the fact that Christmas is good. 
Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for these brief moments together in your word as we celebrate this good news of Jesus, our Saviour. We pray that you would help us to understand it rightly and to accept it and to build our lives upon it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Uh, Well, every year I love when we get to the 21st of December in the Christmas week because it's gravy day. You celebrate gravy day. It's the date, the 21st of December, referenced in Paul Kelly's great song, uh, How to Make Gravy. I think he's one of our best storytelling songwriters and How to Make Gravy is a great Christmas song, a great Christmas story that touches all the right notes in our hearts, especially in a year of isolation like this one. Uh, It takes us, I think, to the guts of what Christmas is all about. Uh, How to Make Gravy, it's written from the perspective of Joe, who's in prison, he's doing time, and he's missing his people at Christmas. A sentiment maybe you can share. As Joe writes about the people he'll miss at Christmas, especially his kids, he also writes to pass on the gravy recipe, because if he's not there, who's going to make the gravy? It won't taste the same, because it's not made by Joe. Just add flour, he says, some salt, a little red wine, and don't forget, what? The dollop of tomato sauce to add the sweetness and that extra tang. It's a great picture, I think, of the seemingly small details, like the dollop of tomato sauce in the gravy. The small details that we miss when relationships are fractured or when distance disrupts our closest friendships. And for so many this Christmas who are missing loved ones because of the isolation of COVID or the grief of loss or the pain of estrangement or the loneliness of divorce or the distance of geography, it's so often those little details, isn't it? those little details that highlight the pain and what you're missing out on? Because in reality, you'd give up the presents, wouldn't you? You'd give up the extravagant food, you'd give up the beautiful table setting simply to be in the room with them. Simply to sit in their chair. Simply to see the crease of their smile without the distance of a photo or the pixelation of a screen. Presence as in being in their presence and relationship. It gets to the very guts of what Christmas is all about. As Paul Kelly sings, you even miss some of the the difficult things. You would take the difficult things just to be in the room together. How to Make Gravy goes on. I'm even going to miss Roger. Because sure as hell, there's no one in here that I want to fight. Christmas reminds us that we are made for relationships, that relationships lie at the heart of life. Our Christmas experience reminds us of that reality. But the truth of Jesus at Christmas reminds us of why that experience is our reality. Why is it that we long for relationships, especially at special times of year with special people? Why do we long to belong to a family and to be welcomed at a table and the warmth of an embrace and the assuring crease of someone's smile? Why is that at the heart of our lives and at the heart of our Christmas and what we feel most painfully when it's absent? Well, it's because of who Jesus is and why he came into the world. Last night on Christmas Eve, we thought about the the point that Christmas is true. What's the point of that truth? What's the point of knowing that Jesus is is a real person from a real place in real time who came for real people? What's the point of John saying to his first century readers and to you and me, no, we saw him, we heard him, we touched him, Jesus is real? What's the point of truth? Is it so that you are right? 
Is it so that you get the cookie? Is it so that you'll win the argument? Is it so that you'll win all the Twitter fights? No, God says that the point of truth, the point of knowing that Jesus is real and true, the point is relationship. Fellowship with Him. Because if the real Jesus redeems real lives like yours and mine, then the reason He does it is for reconciled relationships. Reconciled relationships between you and me and between, most foundationally, us and God. That's the point of Christmas. Not just relationships, but reconciled relationships. This is what John writes in verse 3. Have a look there with me. He says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that, this is the point, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. It's remarkable, isn't it, that in the person of Jesus, the invisible God became visible. That Jesus steps into the world to bring certainty and clarity about God, to unite heaven and earth in a way that helps us long for the day when He'll unite earth with heaven forever. And knowing this Jesus, who is God in the flesh, Emmanuel, who redeems our reality and who reconciles our relationships, knowing this reconciling and redeeming Jesus, that has been on the agenda of God's people for the last 2,000 years. Because, as John writes, from the very beginning, as Jesus brings people into relationship with with Him, He then sends them out to keep bringing more people in to His eternal and global family, that that relationship might be shared, that it might be expanded, that it might be enjoyed by more and more people, and that, uh, John says, is for the fullness of our joy. We want to share this fellowship with you that your joy and our joy might be full, not just full, but complete, perfected, as more and more people are connected back to God in eternal life, so that we can have fellowship with one another and fellowship with God. And the reason that this completes our joy is that as more and more people hear of Jesus, as more and more people respond to Jesus and are connected to Jesus, it's as if that fullness of joy gets bigger and expands. That's the beauty and nature of this eternal life of full joy. That it keeps growing. It keeps expanding. It keeps deepening. You can't exhaust it. A joy you cannot exhaust, a joy you cannot get to the end of, is what's on offer in a reconciled relationship with the redeeming Jesus. The fullness of joy in knowing Jesus, it's like a never-ending gobstopper. Have you ever had one of those? Not one like Willy Wonka made, right? There's lots of lollies in our house this morning. Most of them won't make it through the day. They'll be gone. Half of them are gone already. Let's be honest. Right? But a never-ending gobstopper, Willie Wonka made the never-ending gobstopper for kids who had no money, who couldn't buy more, but could enjoy this one thing forever. And as the deeper layers keep kind of expanding and growing and deepening, you never get to the end of a never-ending gobstopper and the flavours are richer and deeper and more satisfying as you go. That's the fullness of joy in Jesus. A reconciled relationship with your heavenly Father and with a global and eternal family brings the fullness of joy that you will never get to the end of that will never run out, that will never be exhausted, but keeps growing and expanding in more and more satisfying ways for eternity. Eternal life with Jesus in reconciled relationship is not just quantity of life, it goes forever, 
It's also quality of life. It's fellowship with Him in the light. Have a look at verse 5, where he writes, This is the message we've heard from Him and declare to you, God is light, in Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, that's the quality of relationship, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. The light is the place where relationship happens with Jesus. It's the place of clarity and it's the place of goodness. The Bible contrasts the light with the darkness and it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Darkness is what our sin produces. Darkness is where things go wrong. Darkness is where people get hurt. Darkness is where you get lost. Darkness is where you are fearful and uncertain. That's what it looks like to be estranged from God cut off from Him because of sin. To be in the darkness and estranged from God means to be where death and judgment reside. To be lost, to be hurt, to be fearful, to be uncertain, that is the darkness. That is estrangement from God. Fellowship, friendship and the fullness of joy That happens in the light, the light of life and love in Jesus, the light of goodness and beauty and truth, the light of certainty and healing, the light of peace and reconciliation. And so the invitation of Jesus this Christmas is to come and to join his eternal and global family to join his family and be reconciled to one another and to him in the light. In the light of God's truth and his goodness. That's how you know friendship with God and the fullness of joy. By being reconciled through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. To know the certainty, peace and the fullness of joy that comes from being united to him and to one another forever. In Christmas 1944, the US War Department released a a V-disc, like a little record. You can ask Sage about records. Uh, They sent this record to all military personnel and it had on it a version of Bing Crosby's I'll Be Home for Christmas and White Christmas how they became the biggest selling songs of all time, right? The US War Department helped that effort by sending out millions of copies. I'll be home for Christmas. That's a sentiment that many are being frustrated and saddened by, but also longing for today, isn't it? I'll be home for Christmas. It gets to the very heart of what Christmas is all about. That's why Elvis covered it. That's why Buble sings of it. That's why Kelly Clarkson's cover was a big hit in Finland. That's why Jim Lovell from Gemini 7 in space asked NASA ground control to play him I'll be home for Christmas when he was in space away from his family. It's a picture of longing for home, longing for comfort, longing for joy, Coming home at Christmas to family and warmth and belonging, that's a powerful hope, isn't it? And the reason that's such a powerful hope is that we were made to enjoy that kind of comfort, that kind of reassurance, that kind of belonging. And we're frustrated and we're saddened because of its absence in this life. That longing and that frustration points us to something even greater than the warmth and belonging of any family in this life. 
that longing that we have is a small picture, it is a symptom, it is a glimpse of the relationship that we all crave and long for with our Heavenly Father, the God who made us and who loves us and who stepped into this world to reconcile us to Himself in the person of Jesus. The complete joy of fellowship with God and friendship with Him and one another. It's one of the deep and rich pictures the Bible gives us of what it means to know God. As the Bible describes the joy of fellowship with God, it uses the deep and rich pictures of human life that we all know too well. You want to know what that picture of perfected relationship looks like, the Bible says? It's like the most satisfying meal you could ever taste. It's like the most loving relationship you could ever know. It's like the most secure future you could ever hope for. It's like the most refreshing holiday you could ever imagine. It's like the most joy-filled reunion you could ever long for. It's like the most comforting home you could ever dream of. And God became flesh to give you the fullness of that joy in reconciled relationship with Himself and with others that we can taste in real and tangible ways even now and we will experience in all its fullness in Jesus' perfect future where none of the sin and selfishness, where none of the sickness and suffering can interrupt that joy forever. The real Jesus stepped into the world to redeem real people like you and me in order that we might have real relationship and the fullness of joy with God and with one another. And tomorrow we're going to think about how that comes through real forgiveness. But why don't I pray for us? Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much that you didn't leave us alone in darkness and ignorance, but that you came in the person of your Son to bring the light of life and love that we might know you and be reconciled into relationship, friendship with you and with one another forever and ever. Our Father, we long for the fullness of that complete joy and ask that you would give us a taste of it even today as we put our faith in Jesus. And we pray this for his sake. Amen. Let's stand and sing a song of adoration and praise to Jesus as we remember his birth today.